Hey, how's it going, YouTube? How y'all doing today? I was going to start my tractor on camera today and show y'all how that's going. I left uh, my electronics on. I forgot, uh, so I had, uh, there, there's a little uh, kill switch on that tractor to turn that tractor off. I had uh, turned that, kill, uh, that, that I had uh, pulled that kill switch then I forgot to uh, turn the key. So electronics were on on that tractor for like three days. It drained my battery. My uh, my big thing about uh, electronics for tractors or I guess uh, for these old school tractors, is this true for new vehicles and who knows, but for these old tractors, like if I turn my key and if that thing goes nah, 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 but it doesn't go boom it doesn't ignite it there's a there's a it, it's having a spark problem well for a gasoline tractor for a diesel uh, for a diesel tractor um who knows what that could be it could be a yeah who knows uh only gasoline engines have spark plugs so but the uh i haven't looked into the uh the diesel tractor because i haven't had that problem with the diesel tractor yet so uh yep yeah, uh what part of the uh the well a diesel engine it, it um uh, it gets its combustion from uh from pressure in the cylinders so it just compresses that uh the diesel hard enough to make it ignite on its own but uh a gasoline engine it um it relies on spark plugs to 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 ignite that fuel and so if a tractor goes uh no 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 but it doesn't go boom and, and start up that's a for a gasoline tractor that's a uh, problem with the spark plugs if the tractor doesn't even go no 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 like it turn the key and there's nothing it's a it's a problem with the starter and if i turn the key and it just goes Nah, 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 and like very lightly goes nah, 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 nah. that's uh means the battery's out and so uh well another uh way for me to confirm that it's the battery is that i've had this uh, battery on a charger for 12 hours now and it's still charging <laughs> so yeah my tractor yesterday it was going nah, 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 real lightly going nah, 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 and then just go nah, like zzz, make that noise and so the battery's out on it so uh, yep i forgot to turn the key when i had uh pulled the kill switch on my tractor but the tractor is ready to go i got it um i got it uh i got it all uh, i got all the filters replaced i got new oil in it all that done i got uh any uh greased uh grease zerks that were uh the grease fittings that were um uh, that were clogged up i got them swapped out and they are taking grease i found a couple more grease points underneath the tractor like on the clutch pedal and on the brake pedal that i got some grease into that tractor should be good to go i just need to charge the battery up the battery's still charging it could take two days is what but uh, i have a small little battery charger it's a battery tender junior and i was reading on it and uh it could take anywhere from uh, 16 hours to two days so to charge this battery from a uh, from a dead battery so but that tractor is good to go um cattle are on grasses grass is growing in tremendously well here uh, in a few weeks in about two three weeks i'll need to consider planting a sudan grass and then after that a month later after that i'll have to consider planting a palm millet these animals will need a press type medication here pretty soon if i'm going to keep these animals uh up until processing so uh, the best time to, to from, from what I've seen, the best time to uh, to give these uh, animals their dewormer is, uh, is 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 right before it gets warm, as well as uh, right before the uh, the fall grass comes in. So uh, what is it? Uh, January, February, March, April, May, somewhere around uh, April, May, June, somewhere around then is a good time to give these animals some uh, some. Uh, uh, parasite medication big reason is because when it gets warm here like when when the afternoon gets to be over 85 these uh these cattle will get a, a blood sucking fly on them called a uh, horn fly there, there's a there, there's a different few set of flies called uh, like horn fly face fly there are several different uh, stable flies i don't know there, there's all sorts of flies uh that, that suck blood from cattle 
and that uh those flies can be uh prevented the 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 dewormer medication will kill those flies also these cattle um when they're eating grass like this if they eat a whole bunch of grass uh they, they'll get internal parasites too and so uh the best time to uh best time to give these animals a, a deworming medication is right before uh, they start eating a lot of grass so like right now uh, right, when when they get to eat a lot of grass and it's warm outside right now it's still cool outside so uh, they they uh, I'm just starting to see their uh, the, the biting flies show up on them but if it's warm outside if they're eating a lot of grass as well if those two things are happening they're eating a lot of grass it's warm outside it's a good time to get a it's good time to get a that that a deworming medication on them because if it once it gets hot outside they'll uh, they'll have a lot of flies on them and th those flies man that they, they suck a lot of blood from these cattle I, I i can't imagine that it's a good feeling and so uh yep i'll have to deworm these cattle here pretty soon too this guy he, he this is my biggest animal but if i'm going to keep these animals to a higher weight i'll need to deworm them myself i like to deworm them once in the spring then once again in the fall and that's just to uh well okay so like my whole thing about about cattle is that like when a when, when a man raises a dog or when a when a human being raises a dog we give them warm medication you know we give them uh a lot of animals are neutered a lot of animals are a lot a lot of stuff happens to animals it's the same thing with cattle these cattle uh well stuff like uh well the you know to to put it uh to put it um in i guess a uh in a bit of a uh gotta focus on my feet and this camera <laughs> to put it in a uh to put it in a uh relatable way these animals have been neutered that that's that, that that's um that's it just um that's just another way of saying it they uh they got a few parts missing right but uh dogs get neutered cats get neutered dogs get uh dewormed cats get dewormed and it's all done to just improve the quality of life for these animals well that neutering part okay well so the neutering part the, the reason these animals get neutered is because the um having a, a bunch of uh a bulls getting these uh like heifers pregnant is a uh is a uh well in terms of producing beef and all that it's a um okay so cow calf operation a, a farm that produces uh, uh calves that's done like strategically it's not just like throw a whole bunch of cattle together and boom they start popping out babies that, that's not how it happens if that started happening on a feedlot that would be a big problem and so that's the big reason why these animals get um and it's the same reason for for dogs and cats right why do dogs and cats get neutered it's because if those dogs and cats just went out into the wild and had a bunch of babies, that, that'd kind of be a big problem. And it's the same thing with the cattle. You know, these cattle, uh, you know, the, the wild animals don't get to live a good life like this. They, they don't get to live a life where they, uh, they get taken care of. And if they get sick, they get medication. And they don't have to worry about where they're going to find their next meal. They don't have to worry about where they're going to drink some water. I mean, you know ultimately these these animals get eaten but for the 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 amount of time that they're here they get to live a uh a life where they um uh, where they essentially just get to live in peace you know tell you, like look, look at what uh you know uh you know wild animals go through a lot and you know they, like a lot very 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 few animals die of old age a lot of them get 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 killed by animals and die of disease can't find food can't find water there's a lot of reasons for uh for wild animals to die and these are these cattle the, they, they get to live a uh, a life uh, even if it's a shorter life they get to live a much higher quality life and so that's the trade-off and uh you know it just is what it is uh -huh. 
You know, I mean, it, it, it would be great to just be able to raise cattle and let them uh, die of old age and every, every one of these animals get to be a pet. Uh, I mean, people got to eat too. And this, guy, this guy's starting to bloat. But, yeah, people have to eat, you know, and I, I find that just my, my big thing is that I'm just, my, my big thing is to just take care of these animals because, well... They're not well. I mean, you know, it's it's a lot to ask of these animals to cut their life short. A lot of these cattle would live up to ten years old, and having them uh, processed at two at two years is a uh, is a lot to ask from one of these animals. And so I, you know, my my whole thing is that if they only get to live two out of their ten years of life, then I'm going to uh, give them the best two years. You know, give them, uh, give them, always have food in front of them. Uh, let them eat as much as they want. Uh, boy, it ain't, it ain't about letting, letting them eat as much as they want. But at times like this, it's like that. But, you know, sometimes when things get difficult, well, I mean, if I can grow my own hay, well, that once I get my own hay growing and all that, I'll be able to give them as much as they want at all times. So that's, that's the big reason for uh, growing hay. But, yep, these animals, well, my whole thing about hay right now is that I'm going to bring in equipment when that hay is ready to harvest. So this hay, this hay, this grass is good for grazing, but it ain't worth anything as for, as a, uh, it's worth something as forage, but it ain't worth anything as a, as a, as a dry hay or as a, as a, uh, as a harvested crop because look at all these weeds there's too many weeds on this field for this uh for me to go pull this uh pull this for hay but okay so um i got a lot of debt right now i got another five thousand in debt for that tractor i'm almost like a man i don't even know i got a lot of debt though and so, um, my monthly payments on just debt alone is like, is like, uh, like for my truck and all, and all that, and my truck and my, my home and my land and, and everything is probably close to $2,000 a month just to pay out, just to pay minimum payments on my debt. Like my truck, my home, I don't have a minimum payment on these cattle yet. Um, I won't have a minimum uh, minimum payment until about uh, November. But um, yep. My whole thing was well, okay, so, okay, so I may be about uh, I'm, I, and then I also have debt on that tractor. But I could pay uh, I could pay these uh, cattle off. I could also pay my tractor off if I started selling my animals. But my big reason for uh, okay, so this is something that I thought about. If I sold my animals today. I could pay back my debt and the profit that I make, I could start paying off my equipment. But if I just stick it out for a little longer, cause I don't have any interest on these, uh, these cattle yet. I don't, I won't have any interest until November. So if I just stick it out for a little longer and hold on to these cattle until they're higher weight, I could actually make a substantial profit. And so it, it ain't like I'm, uh, I'm bleeding out the jugular right now. Um, like if I had to do something, I could sell these animals and make money, but, uh, I may have a lot of debt right now, but it's good debt. It's debt that's making me money. And so uh, I'd rather hold on to the assets right now. If I started like a, you know, if, if I started, if I had an emergency where I needed money, I could take these animals to a sale barn on any given weekend and make my money and, and turn, these, uh, turn these cattle into money. And so that's okay. I need I will need capital though. Uh I've been looking at silage equipment. For me to I'm only going to bring in silage. So my my whole thing right now is I'm gonna plant this uh this hay first. I'm going to plant this hay. Then when that hay has grown to a point where I'm like, man, I need to harvest this hay, like right now, or within a couple weeks, this hay will be ready for harvest. That is when I'm going to bring in my silage equipment because I'll need to leverage for my silage equipment too. For me to buy a baler, 
for me to buy a hay cutter, for me to buy a rake, for me to buy a silage roller, for me to buy all of my equipment for, for hay, that's going to cost me about 25 grand. It can cost me, well, it's going to cost me about twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars And if I take that on a, uh, on a, on, I'm, I'm willing to take a three-year finance on it just because the silage equipment, I need good equipment. And so if I buy real, real good equipment, it's going to be used, but it's going to be good used equipment, like less than a very, very, very minimal use. That, that's going to cost me almost like $750 a month. And so the moment I bring in my silage equipment, I'll need to start making that payment. If I take, uh, let's say I got twenty five thousand in loan, and I took it on a three year finance, my my credit right now is subprime. My FICO score is subprime, so I don't know what kind of credit score they'll give me, or, or I may have to talk to a bank about putting up collateral for a lower interest loan. But long story short, I need about I need a twenty five thousand dollar loan, and I need it under five percent. If I get a twenty five thousand dollar loan under five percent, and I get it on a three year finance, I, I it'll cost me about seven hundred. Uh, I'm estimating about $700, $750 a month or so. Because $750, uh, let's say $800 times uh, 12 is 96 times 3, that's that's about $30,000. Yeah, so it'd be about $750 uh, for uh, $750, $800 a month. And so uh, the moment I bring in my silage equipment, I'll have to start making payments. And so I'm only going to bring in silage equipment right when i'm ready to uh to harvest silage so when i'm looking at my field and i say oh my gosh my field needs to be harvested within the next two months or within the next two weeks that is when i'll bring in my my my, my equipment because who knows what could happen um well okay but the, the this whole idea of, of who knows what could happen is that like you know like realistically i could walk out onto the street right now and get hit by by a bus right i mean that, that that's a reality but like when a man does so like like when i do this like when i've done this for 15 years and, I, and i've and i've grown crops for 15 years you kind of well, uh, the like uh the idea of what is average begins to make sense and so like I, i've grown crops for 15 years out of those 15 years I, I there i have seen maybe two or three years where it was like man this is not normal like this is not average where it just doesn't rain for like two months in, in the summer where it just gets uh, extremely cold in the winter stuff like that is 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 outside of average and so when um uh, i think that like uh yeah it is a possibility that you know my, my my crop could fail there there is a possibility that my crop could fail and you know and, and uh but that 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 possibility is not the average the average for me when i've seen when i grow crops is this right here you know this, this, like this is an average year if i if i did this again for 15 years i would expect to see this about, about about this for about 12 of those 15 years three years it may just be like man so this is kind of off but one or two years it may be like man this is horrible and even when it's horrible it's not like the world has come to an end i still produce something and so uh i understand that there is a, a possibility for something to happen that is beyond average and if that happens and, and I have a lot of equipment that I need to pay for that, that's, 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 that is when it turns into a financial catastrophe. And so uh, my big thing is that I'm going to uh, plant this hay. I'll be planting this hay. And then when the hay looks like it's about two weeks from being able to cut, that is when I will go buy uh, leverage for the equipment. That is when I will bring in the equipment and then I will... Uh, because here's the thing if i leverage for that equipment then two weeks later i cut hay and then i sell that hay i boom i've made a profit i've spent about 750 dollars to make about a two grand of net profit if i spend 750 dollars to make two grand of net profit that that is a tremendously good investment and then once that hay i, I can make three payments on that three monthly payments just about on that money and if i can make three monthly payments on that money and then uh i can cut hay again in 45 days it, it, it all it, it continuously just compounds itself and so if, if i if i get one cutting 
I make a payment. Boom, I use the money that I make from the equipment to make the payment. I also make a profit of about $1,500. That $1,500 I could hold on to to make two more payments in case of, a, in case of emergency. And then within those two months, I would expect myself to get another harvest of hay as well as have hay regrow again. And so it, it just, uh, th that, that's the idea of, of compounding uh, the cash flow with, with the leverage. And so here, uh, I would guess uh, April, May, uh, I'm gonna be planting my Sudan grass in April. Pearl millet, I'll probably be planting in May. So uh, my, my, my hay equipment, I will likely be bringing that in uh, if I planted in April and I harvested it, I would harvest it in uh, May. So I'd probably bring it in early May sometime. That's when I will be uh, bringing in silage equipment. At that point, I would need to have figured out where I'm gonna get the uh, the financing from, as well as I need a good interest rate and a three year finance minimum. And I'm going to buy good equipment. So that, that that's the, uh, the the rundown of what's happening right now. But that's it for me today, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.